Leia here from LeiaFruitSlide.com and in this video we're going to look at Clemenson reduction and Wolf-Kishner reduction, opposing reaction conditions that give us the same products when we're starting with an aldehyde or a ketone. Both Clemenson and Wolf-Kishner reductions will take a carbonyl like a ketone or an aldehyde and convert it to an alkane. Where carbon used to be double bound to oxygen, we now see two hydrogen atoms contrasting this with a lot of the former reductions that we saw that typically leave you with something like an alcohol. The difference between the two reactions are the reagents and conditions. Clemenson reduction uses zinc with mercury in an HCl catalyst, and Wolf-Kishner reduction uses hydrazine, which is written as H2NNH2, but you can also see it written as N2H4. And this one has a base catalyst, like KOH. And that's the key difference. Even though they accomplish the same product, the Clemenson reduction is under acidic conditions, and Wolf-Kishner reduction is under basic conditions. And this will help you choose. In some reactions, it doesn't matter. But in some reactions, you want a reduction without introducing acid or without introducing base. And this is how you decide which one to choose. Once you understand the reaction, you need a quick way to come up with the products. If you see a carbonyl, like an aldehyde or a ketone, reacting under conditions of ZnHg in an acid catalyst or hydrazine in a base catalyst, simply cut off the carbonyl and redraw your product exactly as you see it, meaning just redraw that carbon chain. You've likely seen this reaction when you studied electrophilic aromatic substitution. You can catch my entire series on electrophilic aromatic substitution by visiting my website layaforsci.com slash EAS. In EAS, you've learned that Friedel-Crafts alkylation will react Rx, for example RCl, in a Lewis acid catalyst like AlCl3 to give you an R group on the benzene ring. This becomes problematic when you're trying to form a product that has the carbon group attached from a primary carbon with a secondary or tertiary carbon directly near that. For example, if you're trying to form propylbenzene from propane. If you try to carry out this reaction using Friedel-Crafts alkylation, and your reagent includes a 1-chloropropane with AlCl3, you're not going to get your desired product. Instead, because of the carbocation intermediate, you're going to get a carbocation rearrangement, and your product instead is going to be an isopropyl group adding to benzene. To avoid a rearrangement, you want to do a Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction where you use an acyl chloride instead of an alkyl chloride with the same AlCl3 catalyst. But since this reaction gives you a ketone instead of an alkyl chain as your product, you need a way to reduce that carbonyl by completely removing it, and this can be accomplished using Clemenson or Wolf-Kishner reduction. Look at your other substituents to determine if you have to stick to acidic or basic conditions. Clemenson reduction is the lesser understood reaction because it uses a mix of ZnHg with an acid catalyst. Since the reaction isn't fully understood, just recognize that HCl acts as a catalyst and makes the carbonyl oxygen into a good leaving group, and metal somehow controls the reaction by holding on and providing electrons. I doubt your professor is going to ask you for a mechanism. The mechanism you will have to know is the Wolf-Kishner mechanism. We'll start with a simple propanone for the ketone and react that with H2N and H2. The reason we write it this way instead of N2H4 is to simply show the way the atoms are attached. We have two nitrogen atoms single bound to each other and they are each bound to two hydrogen atoms. Since this reaction is under basic conditions, expect to have O minuses, but no positive oxygens present. Nitrogen as a base can be positive as the conjugate acid because it's much weaker than a positive oxygen. This mechanism starts out the same way as when you add a means to an aldehyde or ketone. Nitrogen will use a lone pair of electrons to attack the carbonyl carbon, but this forms too many bonds on carbon so we wind up breaking the pi bond between carbon and oxygen to collapse those electrons onto the oxygen atom. I'm going to slightly twist this intermediate so you can keep track of what's going where. 
We have the oxygen atom, which used to have two green lone electron pairs. Now it has a third black pair with a negative charge. Nitrogen that attacked is now bound to carbon. It still has its two hydrogen atoms and a single bond to the second nitrogen that has two attached hydrogen. Nitrogen now has four bonds and no lone pairs for a formal charge of plus one. At this point, you can show the intermediate interacting with the solution to grab and donate a proton, or you can simply show an internal proton transfer where the negative oxygen reaches for a hydrogen on the positive nitrogen, giving nitrogen back its electrons. This gives us a neutral intermediate because oxygen now has two lone pairs and no charge, and nitrogen has one lone pair and no charge. OH- is typically a poor leaving group, but given that we're in basic conditions with lots of OH floating around the solution, it's okay to kick out another OH-. It's only an acid that you can't kick it out. When nitrogen got back its electrons, it got a little greedy. So it uses that lone electron pair to attack that former carbonyl carbon, and this is what kicks out that OH group. Nitrogen now has the single bond it used to have and a second bond from the electrons that attacked, making it double bound to carbon. Don't forget it still has hydrogen and NH2 attached for a charge of plus one. The OH- that we just kicked out, or any OH- in solution, can come over and remove that proton from nitrogen, giving it back its electrons and giving us a neutral intermediate. This is considered the hydrozone intermediate, which should not be confused with hydrazine, the H2N and H2 starting reagent. Now that we've gotten rid of the oxygen, we have to get rid of the nitrogen so that our final product is just an alkane, carbon attached to hydrogen. If you analyze the hydrozone, you'll see that these hydrogen atoms are relatively acidic because if we take away a proton, we can form resonance with that resulting negative charge. And that's exactly how we start the next phase of this reaction. We have an OH- in solution that will come in, grab that hydrogen, and give the electrons back to nitrogen. Nitrogen now has a negative charge. But that negative charge is relatively stable because it can resonate down to the carbon atom. This happens when nitrogen uses its lone electron pair to attack the green nitrogen forming a pi bond between them, collapsing the pi bond between carbon and nitrogen down onto the carbon atom. The resonance structure shows carbon with a lone pair of electrons and a negative charge which isn't very stable but it's more stable than just a carbanion because it can resonate back and forth. When the electrons are sitting on carbon, they'll reach out for and grab hydrogen from water in solution. Remember, KOH would be dissolved in H2O, and when it grabs the hydrogen, the bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks, collapsing onto oxygen, giving me another OH- in solution. This is the first of the two hydrogen atoms. Now we have to find a way to completely break off nitrogen and give carbon a second hydrogen atom. Another OH- in solution will reach out for that last hydrogen sitting on nitrogen and give nitrogen back its electrons. The resulting negative nitrogen is not very happy, and so it uses those electrons to attack the nearby nitrogen, now forming a triple bond, and that causes the nitrogen to break away from carbon, collapsing the electrons down onto the carbon atom. This right here is the key to success of this reaction. Nitrogen, as an N2 gas, is a very stable molecule, but even more so, because it's a gas, it'll bubble out of solution, making this completely irreversible. How do you reverse a reaction when one of the products completely disappeared? Instead, what you're left with is an unstable negative carbon atom, which will quickly find a water molecule in solution and steal the hydrogen atom. This gives us the second hydrogen and completes our reaction. You can find my entire video series on organic chemistry oxidation and reduction, along with the redox practice quiz and cheat sheet, by visiting my website, layerforsci.com redox.